What's up guys, it's Track, and while I was away at the ATA, that's the archery trade show in Indianapolis, uh, I came back and my good friend Pat had bought this. So we now have a Talon from the Nerf Mega AccuStrike line. Now, uh, I don't think that the AccuStrike Mega Darts are anywhere near as good as the regular Mega Darts and they tend to be far more expensive. However, uh, I wanna give this one a shot. <laughs> Get it? Because I really like the shell design. So it's got a lot of things going on from an aesthetics perspective that I think are really nice. This kid seems pretty happy about it. And according to Pat, he picked it up at Target for only 10 bones. That said, uh, I do know that if you're interested in one of these at the end of this video, you can pick them up at Amazon.com for $10, support the channel, and it's got free one day shipping, which is pretty ridiculous. That's cheaper than going to your local Target. Now, on the back, we have built in dart storage, which is gonna be this kind of top area here. And then we've got what appears to be essentially, this is a more dart storage. We're storing darts anywhere we can find them. Store dart on the grip, store dart on the top, store dart in your armpit, wherever you can put them, that's where you store the darts. But uh, I like that as a feature. I think that that's nice to kind of make your shell molding in a way that it's both fun and functional. The thing that I'm not so digging is the grip. The grip's gonna be extra chunky because it is, of course, a traditional kind of big shock or jolt style mega blaster. That is to say, they essentially just took the jolt and made it mo bigger. Now, uh, that's not the end of the world. The jolt's a pretty time-tested design. It's a, little, it's a little smaller than I originally thought it was gonna be, pulling it out of the package like this, but hopefully, uh, we'll use our very scientific my hand measurement system here to uh, to get you guys an accurate read and figure out if this is something that'll be comfortable for the average nerfer. Again, at 10 bucks, like this is definitely targeted at younger enthusiasts as well as performance enthusiasts. But uh, the reason that I'm excited about basically any Mega Blaster that comes out is Mega Blasters are such an easy rebarrel. Just like old school Mega rebarrels very nicely for high performance with micro darts, it should be very easy if this thing has plenty of decent stock performance to turn it into maybe not a powerhouse, but a pretty potent single shot pistol for pistol rounds at your local war. Uh, so these true to form do slide in there and there, and then we even have one more to load it. It seems like the cheaper nerf blasters are, the higher the probability Hasbro is fair with you in terms of how much ammo they give you for it. Overall, uh, Fears have come to be realized. My fingers get kind of scrunched and cramped if I put all of them in there. If I fire it this way with kind of like a pointer system and then using my middle finger as the trigger, uh, it's far more comfortable and actually kind of digs into that sort of sci-fi. It almost, it looks like, a, it looks kind of like one of the funky new age tasers. I'm not gonna lie. So it's making as much use of its system as it possibly can. And the shell obviously would lend itself very well to uh, interesting and cool paint jobs. You only get paint on one side of the blaster these days, but at this point, I think that Hasbro just wraps that into its quarterly report and throws an exclamation point at the end because it just doesn't seem to be getting any better. Come on guys, number one blaster brand in the world. Uh, anyway, the side that has paint on it actually looks rather handsome. I've always been a pretty big fan of the contrast between the white and the red in the Mega line. The combination of the gray and the orange is just sharp. And then the fact that they're including translucencies as well for the, the up top dart storage gives you kind of a, a funky fresh sight picture with the back uh, sight here. And then these two sort of creating an almost, uh, almost SIG-esque sort of night sight thing going on. Obviously there's no tritium at play, but I think that it looks good. And again, like that's where this blaster shines. For only 10 bucks, you get a blaster that isn't half bad, loads pretty easily from its additional onboard storage, and honestly is getting nowhere close to real mega performance. Again, it's just so interesting to me that the mega line was launched with like bigger, badder, best distance. And that seems to be the gimmick every time Hasbro launches a new blaster. And so I was really hoping uh, that all Mega Blasters would be this kind of Centurion goal. And the Centurion didn't get 100 feet, but then we immediately get the Thunderbolt, which could get 100 feet. And so I was like, yes, this is gonna be great. And it seems like they're honestly stepping it down in terms of their performance, but that's not a big deal. I think that this one has a lot of mod potential. Let's at least get an official chronograph reading for you. So let's take it downstairs and put it over the machine. All right, so we're outside, we've got the Talon. We have to constantly remind ourselves to use our middle finger as the trigger because it is quite cramped for its size, but uh, we've got a chronograph out here. We're going to put two active strikes over it, then we're going to put two uh, regular. This is 
uh, one genuine Nerf Mega Dart, and then this is one of the infinitely cheaper ones off of AliExpress. Uh, they fire equally as well. So, um, 62, and again, it's just pretty 60, so I imagine that that's where we're at. I think the AccuStrike ones are a little bit heavier. Nope, 58, and then 55. Jinxie? Jinxie, don't you do it. Don't take my Mega Darts. Those are mine. All right. So because Mega Darts are so incredibly impractical, I'm actually retrieving them for once so that we can fire them downrange. Give you a rough idea of how this will perform in kind of a, a war type scenario, although outside of Shield Busters, which for the record, uh, I don't like using alternate ammo as shield busters. I like using alternate projectiles uh, for like HVZ scenarios. I think that socks are much more of a feel good mechanic than like, I think he had a mega dart. So I, I'm not super into like the LARPiness of like mega darts are worth three points of damage and missiles from demolishers are worth 10 uh, and shield busters, et cetera, and so forth. I, I like to keep my mechanics very simple. So I was going to say, I guess it could be a good shield buster. But honestly, I wish shield busting wasn't a thing, so I'll probably stop mentioning it. Um, but firing downrange, there's certainly not a uh, hundred foot shots. In fact, I never thought I'd say it, but I think the Centurion hits a little bit harder now. The grouping here isn't bad. They've landed within three feet of one another. Um, that might have been one of the better shots, but. That's the Talon. At 10 bucks, I think that it's well worth purchasing for a rebarrel. Uh, if you'd like a rebarrel modification uh, on this one, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. Let me know that that's something that you're interested in. Maybe we'll do it live on Twitch. Uh, it's gonna go a lot like my old Heracles mod, which was taking an actual Big Shock, which is effectively what this is underneath all of its shell, uh, and then turning that into a rival slash elite slash mega slash any caliber sort of blaster. However, I'm going to be honest, I think we're about to break Mach 1 spinning this thing. It's got really solid spinability. So that's the highlight. I think that this one's a, it's not a must buy. It's not a don't buy. It's a just okay. At 10 bucks, this is a fairly priced mega pistol with a little bit of modification power, but that's the mega talent. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Much love, Nerf on Drek out. Oh, oh, oh.